Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are launching up the Arrow 3 a few more times. As you know from the previous episode, this rocket has put the first artificial satellite in orbit. And this got us a lot of funds and it kickstarted a lot of upgrade points for the R&D and the VAB. I, I threw a few in there as well. And we unlocked by accepting the contract really we unlocked a plethora of new satellite contracts some of them are a little bit out of our reach still such as the geostationary orbit unfortunately we don't have a rocket built that is capable of doing that yet this is not to say we don't have the technology because we very well may um it is something i've been slowly thinking about and experimenting with we have a few new engines unlocked by the time this episode ends. However, we are not currently utilizing them yet. Possibly next episode, we'll have some new launch vehicles. I'm looking at creating something that gets a little bit further. We want more Delta V, essentially. And, well, more capabilities once we are in space. Because right now, we don't really have I'll call it freedom of movement, since once we let go of this in a suborbital trajectory, it is spin stabilized and then will forever point in that same direction. We can't do another maneuver, we can't maneuver because it can just barely reach orbit. What I'd like to develop very soon is something that can, well, actually be utilized once in orbit, that can maneuver to another orbit, that can well, get to geostationary eventually, and then possibly the moon. But that is not what we have to work with currently. It is still 1957, and we are just doing slight modifications to the Aero 3 to meet contract parameters. The launch that we just watched was looking to complete two contracts in one, the first solar-powered satellite and the first polar orbit satellite. Seeing the Aurora Borealis from a spacecraft in orbit rather than the map view screen was, was very, very cool. First launch a success. Our next contract that we are attempting to complete is the first Sun Synchronous Orbital Contract. And this is extraordinarily similar to a polar orbit, except with a polar orbit, it won't stay synced up with the Sun. Um, whereas this Sun Synchronous Orbit, if you launch at sunrise or sunset, for the duration that it can stay in this orbit, it will always have a side facing the sun, it'll never go in the dark per se. The requirements for this orbit is slightly retrograde, I think it was between 95 and 99 degrees inclination, and also of an eccentricity just barely above um, circular. So the eccentricity that we are looking for for this orbit is between 0.02 and 0.04 and because of this very crude very early design it's pretty much like playing a game at an arcade where you have to stop the button at a specific point to get the jackpot except in this case if you miss you don't get paid because I don't have any attitude control on the actual satellite itself so you have to just cut the Araby at the right time and, well, hope your reflexes are good enough. Unfortunately, with the first attempt, I was so close but just barely missed it. So another 100 days or so go by and we're able to attempt this same contract one more time.
this episode is that I am now using the procedural avionics. I was before using the, I guess you could call them pre-made avionics. This is the default avionics that come with realism overhaul or RP1, whichever. Um, but I have recently switched over to the procedural avionics. Um, they are highly customizable, and although expensive to tool, they actually make the rocket cheaper after tooling, and also decrease mass a little bit as well. I'm still working through some of the some of the finicky things about it, or just sort of learning how they work. But I'll probably be using these from now on in the future. Up next, we have a brand new jet that has been made. Essentially, we took the KX3 design, decided to give it a delta wing with with angled at 45 degree wing tips for aesthetic reasons, um, and also two of that same engine. This was actually necessary and not just me having fun because the X-Plane contracts were getting faster and faster and the KX-3 was not able to keep up. Running in simulations, the KX-5 would reach a max speed of a little over 700 meters per second before the engines, well, completely fried and blew up. However, the contracts weren't making us go quite that fast, so this was a non-issue pretty much. One successful flight later, and we are coming in for not that great of a landing. Started getting this death wobble and a nice jump, but in the end, we were all all right. Uh, this was definitely very nerve wracking because landings are the most deadliest part of my flying. During one of the many Aero 3 flights that I've flown in the past month, we had a a bit of an encounter with the Kraken, which we haven't seen too much this series yet. A decouple of the second stage decided to put the decoupler inside of the avionics unit and sort of crush the tank against the Araby there. But then, you know, let go nicely afterwards, like it was supposed to previously. Uh, this mission was looking to complete the first navigational satellite contract and did successfully do so, but after a second launch since this one well didn't work i want to thank you guys so much for watching and peace out